In this video, we're going to look at how to analyze a circuit to determine its higher level functionality. In this case, we're going to focus on a circuit that we've either deduced implements a finite state machine or we've been told implements a finite state machine and we want to be able to figure out the functionality of this state machine and draw a state transition diagram for it. So looking at this circuit, the first thing that we might do would be to figure out logic equations for the output as well as for the next state. And so I'm going to arbitrarily label this top bit as the zeroth bit of the state and the second bit as the first bit of the state. And so from here I could say that the output, we have a single output, is just the combination of S1 and it with S0. Looking at S1, we can see that the only input to S1 is from in, so we can say that the next value for S1 is just equal to whatever the input value is. And then for S0, we can see that the input to the D flip flop for S0 is the OR of the inverse of IN as well as S1. So we can say that the next value for S0 is equal to NOT IN OR with S1. And so from here, it's often easiest to create a truth table to deduce how the system moves through different states for different inputs as well as to determine the outputs. And so we've got in terms of the state transitions, we've got the two state bits as well as the input bits. And we're interested in what the next state bits will be. And so to start this table off, we're interested in what is the first state that this state machine is going to come into on a reset. So we look at the reset signal and see that when it's asserted it goes to the set line of S0, meaning that the S0 on a reset would be 1, and it goes to the reset input of S1, meaning that on a reset S1 would be 0. So this would be our initial state. And from here we then want to look at what state it would transition to on different values of the inputs. So depending on if the input is 0 or 1, when our current state is 0, 1, we go look at S1 and see it's just equal to the value of in, so it's going to equal 0 and 1, and for S0, it's either not in or S1. And so in this case, S1 is 0, so we have to look at in, and so for not in, we'd have 1 and we'd have 0. Then from here, we're interested in what states we haven't yet evaluated. So we look at the next states and we see one of them is 0, 1, which is the state we've already looked at, and then another state is 1, 0. And so we could look at the 1, 0 state for both values of the inputs, and we can say that for S1 star, it's just equal to the input, so it's again going to be 0 and 1, and then for S0, the next state is going to be S1 or not in, and since S1 is 1 in this case, we can say that the next value of S0 is going to be 1 in both of these instances. And then again, following the same procedure, we look at the next states that we could be in. 0, 1 we've already evaluated. 1, 1 is a new state, so we can look at 1, 1 for the two different options for the inputs. And looking at S1, it's again following the inputs for S, the next state of S0, which is taking on the value of S1. So that 1 and 1, and we look at these next states and see that both 0, 1 and 1, 1 are states that we've already evaluated, and so at this point we could really stop. This basically means we're never getting into the 0, 0 states, and so we can not have to evaluate that. And so the other step we would want to do would be to look at the outputs, and in this case, the output by the equation is only contingent on the state bits, so we could look at the output for the different states, and we've said we're interested in state 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And looking at the equation, it's only 1 when both bits are 1 and it's 0 otherwise. And then now we want to try to create a state transition diagram, so I'm going to give these states some abstract names. So I'm going to call the 0, 1 state S0, I'm going to call the 1, 0 state S1, and I'm going to call the 1, 1 state S2. You don't have to use these numbers, but these are the numbers or the state names that I'm choosing. And then if, if we look at the next states, we can see that this is going to S0, S1, S0, S0, S2, S0, and S2. And now we can use the data in this table to draw 
a state transition diagram. We're going to start in our reset state. And this is the state that I've called S0. And if we look at our output, we see that this is outputting a zero. When we're in S0, we have two cases for the input. If it's zero, it stays in S0. So if n is not true, then it's going to stay in S0. And otherwise, if n is true, then it's going to go to state S1. And if we look at S1, we can see that this is also outputting a zero. So that's taking care of the first two rows in our state in our next state table. We can then look at the S1 rows and we can see if we're in S1 currently and the input is zero, we're going back to S0. So I would label this with not in. And if we're in S1 and we have an input of one, we're going to the one one state or the S2 state. So we add a state for this saying this is S2. And we look at our output diagram or table and see that our output in this state would be a one. And then finally to handle the last state, when we look at the S2 rows, we can see that if the input is zero, we're going back to the S0 state. And then if the input is one, we're staying in the S2 state. And so this would complete our state transition diagram. And then we could try to determine or give a higher level description of what this state transition diagram is showing. And if we look at this, the only time that this state transition diagram outputs a one is when we're in the S2 state. And the only way we get into the S2 state is if we've seen an input of one at least two times in a row. And so if we were to look at a sequence of input bits and what the output might be, initially the zero is going to keep us in S0 state. We'd see one one and go to the S1 state and we're still outputting a zero here. Once we get into the S2 state, we'd output a one and then we'd see another one and stay in S2 and output one. And then we'd see a zero, which would take us back to S0 and we'd output zero for the next two times. And if we saw another one, this would only take us into S1 and we'd see a zero until we saw two more ones in a row. And this provides an overview of how we can analyze a circuit we know to be a finite state machine and determine its overall behavior.